Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this short video I'm going to look at the problem of taking pictures around sunset. It's not really much of a problem, but I know a lot of people concerned about lighting levels, exposure, things like that. Now I'm an architectural photographer and taking pictures of buildings and the likes around sunset, before sunset, after sunset is part of what I do. And one of the things, I, I do it for landscape as well, but I'm going to use some architectural examples here because they're quite easy to explain changes. And simply I'm going to say, have you ever gone out before sunset to a place and just taken a sequence of pictures over, let's say, an hour, quarter of an hour leading up to sunset, three quarters of an hour after it, or longer? Because Although sometimes it's called the blue hour and various things like this, it's never an hour. The actual amount of time that the light is available at various levels changes depending on the latitude and the season that you're at. So in the example here, and I'm going to go through a sequence here that I took in Leicester city centre where I live. Um, I'd been on a job, was heading back to uh, pick up my car, and I thought, hmm, this is interesting. Nice sky, clear sky. Let's take a sequence of pictures and see how the light changes. Now, the camera I used for this was Canon 5DS. So these are 50 megapixel images, the originals. And the lens I was using was this 17 millimeter. It's a shift lens, which is what I use for a lot of architectural work. Now, if you're curious about the lens, I've got lots more stuff about how to use lenses like this, um, both videos and articles in a book about the subject. But let's start off with this shot here. Now, I've had to put annotate these to remind myself as much as anything because the changes can be quite subtle. This is two minutes before sunset. The uh, photo, this is a uh, titanium clad building. So what we're seeing are reflections of the very last bits of the sun. There are buildings in the way, so although technically this is two minutes before sunset, the sun has probably set behind these buildings. We've got the moon up top here. Um, the moon, interestingly, if you're ever exposing it, you should expose the moon as if it was a sunny daylight scene, daylight scene because that's what it is. Uh, it's very brightly lit. The moon itself is, uh, most of it is darker than uh, road asphalt. But um, as we see it against the sky here, it looks quite light. It isn't that. But you'll also see how small the moon is. One of the things, take pictures. Uh, you need a long focal length for the moon to actually show any detail on it. But... This is a shot here, 80th of a second. So we're still at fairly high light levels. The shade is quite strong and there are no street lights on. Now, one of the things I've used when I'm taking uh, pictures in city centers and the like, if I'm there for several nights, uh, say capturing a large number of pictures, I notice what time the street lights come on because most of the street lights nowadays tend to have light activated sensors. Certainly all the ones here do. So they give you a consistent indication of when the light is at a certain level. And I've used it before to match shots from one night to the next, assuming the weather is the same. But here we go, this is 80th of a second, um, quite easy to process. All the images here have been shot as raw files and have been processed in uh, Photoshop. I don't use Lightroom at all, but these are done in Photoshop. The processing is very similar, but I'm just gonna go through the sequence of these pictures so you can have a look. Now, there we go, two minutes before sunset. Six minutes after sunset. Now, this is probably about the most awkward time to get pictures because the lights are on in some of the buildings, but they're not bright enough to overpower the daylight. You can see that cars have started uh, putting the headlights on. This is down to a 20th of a second. So it is darker, but we've got a longer exposure. Now, you can see also that there's a slight blur of movement of a car there. You can see the lights starting to streak. Now, I'll come back to that when we have longer exposures as well. But here we are. This is uh, taken very close to the last shot. This is looking slightly different direction. We have an image, but it's quite low contrast. There's a lot of dark areas. It's a tricky one to process. Um, and I always find that, you know, this, there's, a, there's a period of about five, 10 minutes where you think things look okay, but when you get the pictures, it doesn't come out quite right. But as I say, 
go somewhere, try this experiment for yourself. And it takes an hour or so, just go somewhere, pick somewhere, explore an area as the light changes. Now, none of the light street lights are on here. If I go to the next image, this is a bit further down the road, we're now 15 minutes past sunset. Now, this is looking out to the west in this direction. So the sun has set over in this direction here. Um, so we've got now a few street lights coming on. We've got the lights in the building are showing well at a fifth of a second exposure. We're getting quite nice streaking of rear lights from cars and we're getting quite a nice overall balance to it. That's 15 minutes after sunset. The exposure has dropped to a fifth of a second. Now, all of these shots were taken at f6.3. Happens to be this lens works quite well at that. Um, and with various degrees of vertical shift. That's why the building has vertical. That's why the building isn't leaning over like that. That's why, one of the reasons you use this sort of lens. So there we go, 15 minutes. We've still got enough light from the sky to light up quite a few bits of buildings. We're not relying on the street lighting. Street lighting is on further down here in the image, but we're not necessarily relying on it. We're now at 19 minutes past sunset. Um, there are loads of web apps and things you can do. Uh, you can look at websites to find the precise time of sunset. Worth noting, just for, you'll need your location, as I said, because it varies throughout the year. The amount of time of sunset, it varies as well. But here we are at 19 minutes past. I've now got almost all the street lights are on. The street lights are contributing a little bit to the scene, but it's mostly, we've got artificial lighting, we've still got some natural lighting. Here we are, this is about 20 minutes past sunset. Now, this look here is perhaps pretty near the optimal look if you want to capture um, detail in the sky and in the buildings. There's light in the buildings, there's light on the sky, you can see reflections. Sun sets over, the sun is set over in that direction, so you know, it, it's getting dark, but it's not too dark yet. One other thing to remember is that your eyesight adapts as it gets darker. So without experience, and this is one of the reasons I suggest going and actually doing this, we underestimate how much change of light there has been because we adapt to it. So we see the lighting change, particularly with the street lighting here. Camera records just what's there. And so this is 19 minutes, fifth of a second. Now, in the process of doing this, I'm just showing yeah, a few pictures here. In the process of doing this, I think I took well over 100 pictures. Now, I'm not going to show all of them because most of them don't show much of a difference. It's a gradual process, but some just pick it out nicely. If you're taking pictures and you have moving traffic and you want nice blurs, colored bits, if you want the effect of the moving traffic, because of the delay in taking it here, you end up taking lots of shots and then picking the best. Um, this is one of those ones where planning and waiting for the right shot really achieves exactly what you want. You have an idea with the cars going past. So I've got a car here that's almost out of the shot, which gives a nice drag of the lights. But the lights over here, the more distant cars, there's not much movement in them at all. But that's, as I say, that's at about 19 minutes past sunset. And that is a particularly nice time. The color balance, the mix of color is very nice. And it's easy to process the image. Now, if I go to the next one, this is at 22 minutes. There's only a few minutes on, and I've walked down the road from where I took the last shot. We've now got street lights on giving quite a lot of light. However, a lot of the buildings themselves, if, they haven't, if they're not lit themselves, are looking a bit dark. This is a quarter of a second now. That takes quite a bit of processing your image to bring out the contrast and for it to look natural. It's very easy to over-process images like this so they don't give the right feel for how it should look. 22 minutes, yet yeah, it's starting to work. I've got the street lights are lighting things up. We can see the road here is lit by the street lights. Also, there's some sky light as well. The sky is starting to lose its color. One of the problems here is that at this point, to bring up 
the level for the lighting on the buildings here, it can potentially make the sky look a little bit too light, a, bit, a little bit drawn out. You might think, ah, well, I can apply a slider. I can adjust um, the brightness of the highlights. I can mask this and do various things. The problem is always that you tend to get ghosting and you get halos around things. Now, I could you know, make the sky look darker. I could do all kinds of things on that but we would have a potential problem of halos around objects like lampposts, edges of buildings and that. And for me, the moment I can see effects like that, I've pushed things far too far. If I can see it, I can't then unsee it, so I have to knock back the controls. Always when doing adjustments, I always overdo the adjustment and then pull it back to what I want, rather than just try and get it right straight. Just go right over the top. Oh, I don't like that effect. Just pull it back and we'll get a picture that we're okay. This is at, as I say, a slightly awkward time for lighting. We're at quarter of a second, so there are distinct uh, lines from the curls, but overall, it's not too bad. Next one, we're now at 30 minutes past sunset. This is actually looking to the west, so we've still got quite a bit of light in the sky. We have got street lights are now lighting the ground, not terribly well, but it's balancing the sky. We're getting closer there. So this is not looking too bad. This is only just a short distance down from the, the last shot. This is half a second, f6.3. Um, all shots of this all done at 100 ISO on this, the base ISO for this camera. I always use the base ISO, certainly I've, when I've got a tripod, because it gives the best quality, gives the least noise. Uh, different cameras be slightly different, but the whole idea of going out and trying something like this is it's for you to get to grips with how the camera performs. And also you're using it in fully manual mode. Be very wary of trying to take pictures in lighting conditions like this with any element of auto, whether it's auto ISO, shutter support, aperture priority, shutter priority, anything. Don't use them. This is a great way to master using manual settings. You also get to appreciate the lighting levels much better. Um, I still have difficulty sometimes guess, guessing what it is, but a few test exposures, checking the histograms, looking at that gives you an idea for what the light level's like. Um, and as I say, it's changing quite rapidly here and it's difficult to estimate it. So back it up with sh actual shots. Don't just think, I know what this looks like. I'll take one shot and off we go. Bracket your exposures. You may find that a particular shot benefits from processing in a different way. And having different shots with different exposures allow you to handle things in different ways. Um, I personally don't use HDR multi-shot techniques. Uh, the processing of them is rarely worth the effort. You may like that, give it a go. Now, we'll just move on to the next one below that. We're now at 35 minutes. The sky is now quite dark. You can see that the building itself has lights in it. That's great. We've got lights here. We've got the road is lit by the street lights. That's great. We've got some lighting in this building. But the problem is most of the building that's not actually lit is very dark. Now, if I try and bring that up to show it, so I you know, increase the exposure, I risk blowing out the sky and I lose the color of the sky. Um, so it's always a balancing act, as I've said before. And this is 35 minutes, half a second exposure, f6.3, 100 ISO. Um, that is just getting a little too dark for some types of shots, but not dark enough for others. So if I go back to the next one here, this is now 40 minutes. We're back to the scene I was at earlier. So at 40 minutes, half a second still, we've got the building lit up. We've actually still got some deep blue in the sky, which can look very nice. Um, and yeah, when you get there, that, the lights from the cars are trailing. Once again, there's several shots to get this, to get a set of tray car lights that I like. So we've got the star spikes there, typical of this lens. Um, this is where I stopped. Um, I might have taken a few more shots, but 40 minutes, we've got dark sky, we've got the scene that yeah, it's a nighttime shot by now. Um, it's a nighttime shot where there's still a bit of color in the sky, but effectively we've gone 40 minutes and we're near enough for a nighttime shot. 
Um, the differences are quite pronounced. If I go back to looking at an earlier shot of this exact building from the same place almost, we have that. So there we are, 19, 20 minutes after sunset. We've got sky, we've got a nice mix of colors, but we go to 40 minutes after sunset and we've got that. That's the difference over the time change. So what I would say is, if you've never done this, go out and try it. Set your camera up. You don't have to move about. I walked around different places to look to get different views. You can just pick one place, one building or something like that. Set your camera up and take pictures every few minutes, every minute or two. Start, you know, five minutes or so before sunset. Work your way through until it's dark enough to count as a nighttime shot. Practice with your exposures, manual exposure. By all means, try some auto exposure shots. You may be lucky, it may work. You may not be lucky, it may not work. I do this for a living, so I have to trust to actually getting it right while I'm there. I don't get the opportunity to go back. So there you go. There's something to do. I learned quite a lot about this because even though I do a lot of shots around this time, far fewer around dawn, uh, where the process obviously reversed, um, I learned rather a lot about doing this and it's always a good reminder. Uh, and more than anything, it's a reminder that your eyes see things differently to how a camera records a scene yet alone before you've started to process your raw images. So, hope that's useful. Please do have a go, go and do it, uh, rather than think, yes, I know that. Um, if you haven't, just have a go. It's something to do, get you out the house, get you taking some photos. And the way to take better photos is to take more photos. So, I hope that's been of use. If you've got any other topics like this that you're curious about, please do let me know in the comments. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, and please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks.